one of the basic questions always is, why are some cities more equal than other cities? Um, why is London always performing well? Why Liverpool is not? Um, why has Detroit gone down the drain and Chicago is prospering? Why is the, the Rhine Ruhr area in Germany um, relatively in decline and Munich is growing uh, fast as mushrooms? So these are questions that have been raised over the last decades already by uh, both academics and, uh, and practitioners. Um, and there are a lot of answers to it, um, but we still have not found the answer that is until this afternoon. So most probably by the end of the noon, we will have found the answer to this question. So we talk about local economic development. And let me start this session by an example, uh, example from the city that I come from, uh, the city where I work, where I live, and where I have studied, where the headquarters of our company is based, and this is what the city looked like. Um, this is May 1940, and we just had a visit from the Germans, uh, and we didn't like that very much, and they didn't like it, that we didn't like it very much, and then this happened. Um, but before that, Rotterdam was actually quite a fast-growing city. Originally a fisherman's village, located uh, uniquely in geographical terms. Um, after industrial revolution and the growth of international trade, Rotterdam uh, developed its port and uh, created a very good uh, connection with the North Sea and with the German hinterland. And that made uh, Rotterdam into a one time even the biggest port in the world. Now in 1940 this happened, uh, not much was left of the city uh, and that meant that uh, the city had to be rebuilt in rather high speed because people didn't have homes, had a place to live but at the same time there was hardly any money. So um, development of the city, the inner city housing was actually done quick and cheap or quick and dirty if you prefer. Um, the advantage was that the city had a lot of space. Uh, it could, you know, really uh, invest in wider roads, uh, be prepared for uh, uses of cars in the inner cities, which in old towns, of course, has always been very difficult. Um, and there was room for a lot of modern architecture, um, which architects liked, but a large part of the population did not like very much. Um, it was not a very popular place actually to live or to spend your money and people with you know, a reasonable income preferred to live outside of Rotterdam. But at the same time after World War II the port kept on growing faster and faster. Trade and logistics, so a very international orientation that was the whole base of uh, the economic base of the development of uh, the city. Um, and as I said before, till about 10 years ago, it was the largest port in the world, not in terms of surface, but in terms of tons of goods that were being transported through the port. Um, of course, now the Chinese ports are bigger. I mean, we are only 17 million, so we ne can never compete with China, but we're still by far the largest port in, um, in Europe. And you can see, uh, and this is also one of the developments, um, the port is being modernized constantly. There still are a lot of jobs in the port area. Um, used to be, by the way, over 80,000, now it is under 50,000. So you see that while the port is still growing, the number of jo jobs in the port area is declining. And usually these are well-paid jobs uh, for actually rather lowly educated people, so that was a rather unique situation. Now, well-paid jobs disappeared and not enough other well-paid jobs were created in the city. So you saw that port and city were growing apart, physically because the port was moving towards the sea, but also mentally because the people in the city did not have this relationship with the port anymore, because they didn't have the jobs there anymore, or at least much less people had jobs there. Um, at the same time, there was a large influx 
from uh, people um, also from other countries that uh, were actually uh, rather lowly educated. So unemployment was rising. And the image of Rotterdam at the time was a bit mixed. Rotterdam had a good image as a place to work, but it was a bad image as a place to live. People were earning money in Rotterdam, but they were spending it outside of Rotterdam. Every year in those days, um, we still had guilders then, but uh, when you translate it into euros, every year over half a billion euros left the city. It was earned in the city, but it left the city to be spent elsewhere. And as you know, the image of a city can be very, very important in economic development, but an image, it arrives by foot, as we say, but it leaves on horseback. So, it is very difficult to change it. But Rotterdam has been always very persistent in investing in modern architecture. And in the last couple of years, some very iconic buildings have been created. We created a new central railway station with very special architecture. They call it JAWS in the city. That's the one in the middle. Um, we created a market hall, uh, the picture to the right, uh, which is not only famous because it's huge and there's also apartments because it is, in terms of culture, uh, it, it is like a piece of art, the whole uh, inside of this market hall. And we have what we call uh, the vertical city, that is the picture to the left. Um, it is built by a rather famous architect, Rem Koolhaas. Um, and it is a huge building, 40 stories, 40 floors, uh, where the Rotterdam uh, municipal authorities uh, have their offices, but it's also a large hotel. Uh, there are various restaurants, sports clubs, uh, parking garages, uh, whatever. So it is like a city in one building. In the last few years, Rotterdam can actually boast uh, uh, an increasing popularity as a place to be. But the big question is what triggered that? Um, of course, you have these investments, you have these iconic buildings, but that did not necessarily change the image of the city. What really changed the image of the city was this. Um, first of all, the rough guides showed interest in Rotterdam and said, well, this is a modern place, this is a modern town, this is a cool place to be. Go there. Lonely Planet followed. And after that, CNN with a large show on Rotterdam and how wonderful this modern architecture is. And this actually attracted a lot of tourists, uh, a lot of visitors, both from within the country, but also especially from outside the country. And it also attracts, let's say, the younger generation that is attracted to what they think is a cool city, is a modern city. So we see over the last, it's very recent, let's say one, two years, it's even difficult to uh, show it in the statistics, but we see that there's a huge influx of young people, young, well-educated people in the city uh, looking for a place to buy, an apartment to buy, which is becoming more and more difficult now. Um, but they are the ones that create new businesses. They are they do the startups, they are, you know, uh, the new, or try to be the new engine of economic growth. So it's growing again, Rotterdam. But my guess is that without these publications in these media, this would never have gone so far. Um, so is this something new for local economic development, the influence of the media? Um, if Lonely Planet starts to promote uh, Detroit or Liverpool, will this be enough? I don't think so, but there's something to discuss.